welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at solving one step, two step, and advanced equations. As it happens, uh, these are topics that frequently appear in the mathematics knowledge subtest of both the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB as well as the pre-screening internet delivered computer adaptive test, that is the PICAT. More specifically, I'm gonna be going through 12 practice problems that should closely mirror what you should expect to see on both the ASVAB as well as the PICAT. In order to get the most out of this video, you'll wanna pause the video after I read a practice test question, attempt to work out that practice test question on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As a reminder, on the actual ASVAB and PICAT, you will not be permitted to use a reference sheet or a calculator, so try not to use any of those resources as you work through these 12 practice test questions. Finally, I wanna mention this. Uh, this is as difficult as the ASVAB and PICAT get. So if you can answer more than 70% of these practice test questions correctly on your own, then you should be good to go on test day. And for that reason, I do not encourage you to spend any money on tutoring or expensive test prep resources such as online boot camps. Instead, I want to encourage you to do one of two things. Uh, one, go to your local library and check out a study guide or purchase a inexpensive study guide from amazon.com or Barnes and Noble, or two, uh, you can always check out my free ASVAB slash PICAT math bootcamp playlist. Of course, as you can see, uh, that playlist has more than 500 practice test questions. And if you go through it from start to finish, uh, you'll be exceptionally well prepared for either the ASVAB or the PICAT. As always, I'll include a link to my free math bootcamp playlist in the description of this video. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. All right, so uh, let's get started by taking a look at some one-step equations. And since this is a fairly simple topic, we're only gonna work through four practice test questions involving one-step equations. And as you can see, this first one says, if x plus one equals three, then x equals. Well, this question is a good illustration of what a one-step equation is. A one-step equation takes one move or one step to solve. And in this case, we're being asked to solve the equation x plus one equals three for x, which means in other words, we wanna get x equal to something by itself. Well, in order to do that, all we have to do is subtract one from both sides. This crosses out here, leaving you with just x on this side. Three minus one, of course, is two. So the correct answer to this one is B2. Now, some of you are probably saying, is the ASVAB in PiCat really that easy? Remember, the ASVAB and PiCat are computer adaptive tests. So in the beginning of the test, you will get questions that are as simple as this. You want to get those questions right because as you get more easy questions right, the test is going to get progressively more difficult and you'll start seeing harder questions later on in the test. When you see the harder questions, that means you're going to get a good score. All right. So yes, questions as simple as this one can show up on the test especially in the beginning of the test. So number two says if x over four equals negative 20, then x equals. Again, this is a one-step equation and I'm gonna write it off to the side as if I was working on my own scratch paper. We're trying to solve the equation x over four equals negative 20 for x. In other words, we wanna get x equal to something by itself. Um, sometimes people have a hard time with questions like this because they don't realize that they technically have a one in front of this X. And if it's helpful, you can actually rewrite this equation like this. One over four times X equals negative 20. Now it's pretty obvious that the only step involved in solving this equation 
is to get rid of this 1 fourth in front of the x. And to do that, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4 over 1. All right, this crosses out here and here. And in doing so, we're just left with x on this side. Now we have this, negative 20 times 4 over 1. Well, what is 4 over 1? 4 divided by 1 is just 4. So this is negative 20 times 4. And you should be able to do this in your head. Uh, negative 20 times 4 is negative 80. Of course, if you needed me to, I could work that off to the side. We have 20, negative 20 times 4. You should know that a negative times a positive is going to be a negative. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. All right, so the correct answer to this one is C, negative 80. All right, so number three says, if x equals four, which of the following expressions does not equal nine? So for this one, we're doing the opposite of solving an equation, and we're given what the letter variable is equal to, and we have to evaluate expressions. Now, let me just say this, and this is important when you take the test. The difference between an equation and an expression is very simple. X plus one equals three is an equation because it has an equal sign. X plus one is an expression because there is no equal sign. So again, the difference between an equation and an expression is simply an equal sign. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna do for this one. In this case, we were told what the value of our letter variable was. Specifically, we were told that x equals four, and we wanna know which of these expressions does not equal nine. So in light of that, we're simply gonna be plugging in four for x in each of these. And let's go ahead and get started doing that. For this first one, we have x minus negative five. Let's substitute four in for x now. This becomes four minus negative five. 5. When you have minus minus like that, it simply becomes plus. So this is the same thing as 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. All right, so this first one does equal 9. Let's go ahead and check out B now. We have x plus 5. Again, we know to let x equal 4 according to this problem. So this becomes 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. So this one does equal 9. Let's check C now. Uh, this is 2x plus 1, and we're told to let x equal 4. Let's go ahead and evaluate this expression. This becomes 2 times 4 plus 1. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. All right, so that one equals 9. And by process of elimination, we know D does not equal 9. All right, let's check out D real quick. Uh, again, we know that we have the expression X minus 15, and we're going to let X equal 4. Uh, this becomes 4 minus 15. 4 minus 15, of course, is negative 11. And clearly, that does not equal 9. Therefore, we know D is the correct answer. So number four says, if 10 over two times two over 10 equals 4k, then what does k equal? So we're trying to solve this equation for k. We have 10 over two times two over 10 equaling 4k. And believe it or not, this is a one-step equation. That is to say, it really only takes you one step to solve this one. Uh, that said, we do have to deal with these fractions in order to see that. And for that reason, I'm going to work this off to the side. Notably, I'm going to simplify this 10 over 2 times 2 over 10. Uh, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. It's a pretty simple and straightforward process. So this becomes uh, 10 times 2 over 2 times 10. Well, you should know that 10, 10 times 2 is 20. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 divided by 20 is 1. So in reality, this, this equation is this. 1 equals 4k. And this very much is a one-step equation. To get k by itself, we're simply going to divide both sides by 4. This crosses out here, leaving you with k on this side. We can see that k is 1 fourth. 
And in mathematics, it's customary to write the variable for which you solved on the left. So we can write this as k equals 1 fourth. All right, so that is the answer to that one. Of course, you can see that it is a. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to working out some examples involving two steps. Again, if a one-step equation requires one move to solve, then a two-step equation requires two moves to solve. And thankfully enough, uh, these questions are also pretty simple and straightforward. So let's go ahead and take a look at four uh, practice test questions. For this first one, it says if x over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14, then x equals. All right, so we have x over 5 plus 6 equals negative 14. And we want to solve for x according to this problem. In other words, we want to get x equal to something by itself. Well. Again, this is a two-step equation. The first step is right here. We're going to move this 6 to the other side of the equation via subtraction. This crosses out here, leaving you with x over 5 equals. Uh, what is negative 14 minus 6? That's going to be negative 20. All right, so that's our first step. Where's the second step in this equation? It's right here. And if it's helpful, we saw a problem that was very similar to this one in the first part of this video. Again, we can imagine that there's a one there and that enables us to, us to rewrite this one like this, one over five X equals negative 20. So the second step is right here. It's to clear this one fifth in front of this X. And to do that, we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of one fifth notably five, five over one. This crosses out here and here, leaving you with X on this side. Uh, and let's go ahead and work this out. Uh, this says negative 20 times five over one. Well, what is five over one? Five divided by one is just five. So this is negative 20 times five. Uh, negative 20 times five is negative 100. Again, a negative times a positive is a negative. Negative 20 times 5 is negative 100. So the correct answer to this one is C. Let's work on number 6 now. It says uh, if 25 equals 4x minus 7, then x equals. So we have 25 equals 4x minus 7. And we want to solve this equation for x. In other words, we want to get x equal to something by itself. Again, the first step is right here. We're going to add seven to both sides in order to get four X by itself. This crosses out here, leaving you with four X on this side. What is 25 plus seven? Uh, if you have to use your fingers to count that out, that's fine. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. All right. And here is our second step. Uh, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by four in order to get X by itself. 32 divided by 4 is 8. Uh, in math, it's customary to write the variable for which you solved on the left. So you can write this as x equals 8. And of course, that is answer choice B. All right, let's take a look at another example. Number 7 says if negative 2 plus x over 3 equals 10, then x equals. So we're trying to solve the equation negative 2 plus x over 3 equals 10. 4x. In other words, we want to solve this equation such that we get x equal to something by itself. First thing we want to do is move 2 to the other side of the equation via addition. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so that goes away, leaving you with x over 3 equals 10 plus 2 is simply 12. All right, we've seen something like this already, and if it's helpful, you can rewrite it like this. Again, there's an imaginary one in front of that letter variable x. So we can rewrite this as one third x equals 12. To get rid of this one third in front of the x, and this is our second step, by the way, we're going to multiply it by its reciprocal, notably by 3 over 1. In doing so, this crosses out here, leaving you at just x on this side. Now let's look at this. We have 12 times 3 over 1. 3 over 1 or 3 divided by 1 is just 3. So this is 12 times 3. What is 12 times 3? 
you should know that that is 36. And if you need to, you could always work it off to the side very quickly. Two times three is six, three times one is three. All right, so the correct answer to this one is C, 36. All right, let's take a look at number eight now. It says in the formula C equals five ninths times F minus 32. If C equals 40, then F equals. All right, so uh, again, this is a two-step equation. Uh, we have C equals five over nine times F minus 32. We're trying to solve this equation for F. In other words, we wanna get F equal to something by itself like that. And we were told that C is 40. So the first thing I wanna do is plug in 40 for C right here. This becomes 40 equals five over nine times F minus 32. Again, we're solving this equation for F. So the first thing you wanna do is clear this uh, five ninths from in front of this F minus 32. And to clear fractions, you simply multiply by reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of five ninths, which is nine over five. In doing so, we get across this out, which just leaves us with F minus 32 on this side. And I like to work uh, fractions like this off to the side. Here we have nine over five times 40. That is to say we're multiplying a fraction, notably nine over five by 40, a whole number. One thing you can do to make this a little bit easier is to rewrite 40 as a fraction by placing it over one, and then you can cross reduce. I can say, for instance, five goes into five one time, five goes into 40 eight times. So this becomes nine over one times eight over one. Nine divided by one is just nine, Eight divided by one is just eight. What is nine times eight? That is gonna be 72. All right, so this becomes 72 equals F minus 32. So that was the first step. Second step is to get F by itself by adding 32 to the other side of the equation via addition. This leaves you with F on this side. All we have to do is work this out very quickly. Uh, two plus two is four, seven plus three is 10. So in math, it's customary to write the variable for which you solved on the left. So we can see that F is equal to 104, which is answer choice D. Again, this is a two-step equation, albeit a little bit more involved than the first three examples that I showed you. Uh, that said, you should be able to do this for the test. Questions like this do show up pretty regularly. Now that we've looked at one-step and two-step equations, let's work on solving some more advanced equations. And as you'll see in just a few minutes, the key to solving more advanced equations is this. You're gonna apply your skills that you have in solving one-step and two-step equations. Uh, that said, you're also gonna have to start taking the square root of things to solve more advanced equations. And that's all there is to it. So with all that being said, let's take a look at our first practice problem here. All right, so uh, number nine says this, if three to the X power equals 81, then X equals. So we're trying to solve this equation, three to the X power equals 81. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, how am I gonna solve that one? It seems a little bit more challenging than what we've looked at in this video so far. That is true. That said, one strategy you can take whenever you're solving equations is to simply plug in your answer choices and whichever one of those answer choices makes a true mathematical statement is the correct one. So let's start by plugging in uh, answer choice A. So A says let X equal two. In other words, we're gonna plug in two to the equation three to the X equals 81. So this becomes three squared equals 81. What is three squared? Three squared means three times three equals 81. What is three times three? You should know that is nine. Does nine equal 81? It does not, that is not a true statement. Therefore, we know A is not correct. Let's go ahead and test out B. Uh, B says let X equal three. Uh, so in the equation, 
3 to the x equals 81. We're going to be plugging in 3 for x, so this becomes 3 to the third equals 81. What is 3 to the third? That's the same thing as 3 times 3 times 3 equals 81. Let's work this out really quickly. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So this says 27 equals 81. Is that a true statement? It is not. Therefore, we know B is not correct. Let's go ahead and check out C now. Again, C says let x equal 4. We're going to be plugging that into the original equation, 3 to the x equals 81. We know x is going to be 4, so this becomes 3 to the 4th equals 81. What does 3 to the 4th mean? It means take 3 and multiply it by itself 4 times. Uh, let's work this out very quickly. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3. If you can't do that in your head, you can always do it off to the side like this. 27 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. Drop down a 1, carry a 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. So this says 81 equals 81. Is that a true statement? It is. Therefore, we know the correct uh, solution to this one is C4. Again, sometimes it's very difficult to solve some of these nonlinear equations. And in response to that, you simply have to take your answer choices, plug them in, and find whichever one works, which is exactly the strategy we used in this case. All right, so number 10 says if 9x squared equals 81, then x equals. So we're trying to solve the nonlinear equation 9x squared equals 81 for x. In other words, we want to get x equal to something by itself. So uh, unlike the previous problem, uh, this one looks like we can solve it pretty quickly. Uh, and the first thing uh, we want to do is divide both sides of the equation by 9 to get rid of that 9 in front of that, that x squared. This crosses out, leaving you with x squared on this side. 81 divided by 9 is 9. All right, so now we have to get rid of this square. And to do that, we're going to do the opposite operation of squaring something. That is to say, we're going to take the square root of both sides. In doing so, this square root and this square cancel each other out, leaving you with x on this side. What is the square root of 9? You should know that is 3. So the correct answer to this one is b, 3. So number 11 says, if uh, x squared minus 44 equals 100, then x equals. So we're given the equation x squared minus 44 equals 100, and we want to solve it for x. In other words, we want to get x equal to something by itself like that. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is add 44 to both sides of the equation to get x squared by itself. This crosses out here again, negative 44 plus 44 is 0, leaving you with x squared on this side. 100 plus 44 is 144. And as we saw in the previous problem, uh, we now have x squared equal to something. We want x just equal to something. So to cancel out this square, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Uh, this cancels out our square there, leaving us with just x on this side. The square root of 144 is 12. So the correct answer to this one is C, 12. All right, so number 12 says, if k to the third minus 64 equals 60, then k equals. So we're trying to solve the equation k to the third minus 4 equals 60 for k. In other words, we want to get k equal to something by itself like that. Uh, it's pretty obvious that we're going to start by adding 4 to both sides of this equation. In doing so, those cross out there, leaving you with just k the third on this side equals 60 plus 4 is 64. Now previously we saw that in order to get rid of a square of something we took the square root of that and those canceled each other out. To get rid of the cube of something we're going to do the same thing and we're going to take the cube root of that. We're going to do that to both sides of the equation. These two cancel out leaving you a just k on this side. And we can see that k is the cube root of 64. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, how do I figure out what the cube root of 64 is? Cube root means you're finding a number that you multiply by itself three times 
to get that number. And this one should be pretty obvious. What is four times four times four? Well, four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. So I know the cube root of 64 is simply four. In other words, K is four. All right, let me go ahead and break this down a little bit more off to the side since this is one of the last problems in this video. How do I know that uh, the cube root of 64 is four? Again, uh, we now know that four times four times four equals 64, correct? Well, what is four times four times four? That's the same thing as four to the third power. And uh, I can actually express this uh, radical as a uh, exponent. That is to say, I can write four to the third, the cube root of four to the third like this. I can write it as four. I'm gonna take this exponent, place it in my numerator. I'm gonna take this index and place it in my denominator as four to the three over three. Three divided by three is one. So this is four to the first power. Four to the first power, anything to the first power is just that number. So that is just four. All right, so that's how I know that the cube root of 64 is four. And we had to do some very basic uh, work involving uh, radicals and indexes. All right, so that is it for this video. And as I said at the beginning, this is as difficult as the ASVAB and PiCAD get. So if you can answer a majority of these correctly, uh, you should be good to go on test day. As always, if you want to help my channel out, you can do one of two things. One, you can either subscribe to it, or two, uh, you can share links to my videos, including this video on social media, including on Facebook and Twitter. Again, I hope these videos show you that the ASVAB and PiCAT are not that difficult uh, to pass and do well on. So for that reason, you should really save your money and just use free and inexpensive resources as you prepare to take those tests. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and catch you loose. Konnichiwa.